Hi, my name is Ian T. I'm at the National Gallery Singapore to see the tailors and the mannequins, Chen Cheng Mei and Yu Qin. Next to me is Roger Nelson, the curator of this exhibition. Follow us on a tour of the show. The exhibition begins with Yukin's painting behind us, titled The Tailors and the Mannequins, which also titled the show after. Could you introduce the artist and also tell us why did you decide to start the show with this work? Thanks. So Yukin's a really fascinating artist who really points to some of the connections between Southeast Asia and other regions in the world, particularly in the Global South. So he's an artist who, after being born and studying in Cambodia, um, spent a bit of time studying in France and then lived for almost three decades in Africa and the Middle East. He made this painting here um, shortly after moving to Abidjan, which is the capital city of the Ivory Coast in Africa. And for me, the painting really kind of gives a sense of the artist as an outsider figure, somebody who is spending his days wandering the streets of Abidjan, observing what's going on in daily life, but always at a, a bit of a distance or a remove. So if we look at the two figures in the painting, they're both busy at work, cutting fabric and working on a sewing machine, but they've got their heads down. They're not looking at us. They're not looking at Yukin either. And the fabric that they're sewing on kind of cascades forward from them into the picture plane, forming a barrier between them and the artist, and by extension between them and us. So for me, some of these things were really emblematic of, of the, the concerns that we were thinking about with this exhibition. Artists can um, be kind of drawn to and inspired by unfamiliar people in unfamiliar places and yet still allow those people to retain um, an air of mystery, retain um, what we might call opacity or their kind of unknowability. Um, looking at the, the, the painting, we get a sense of the ways in which Yu Kim was kind of really curious about these people but also respected the distance between them. Roger, so Yukin has a very distinctive and also consistent style of painting throughout his career. Could you talk about his artistic influences as well as the type of subject matter that he gravitated towards? Mm, sure. Thanks Ian, it's a good observation and a good question. In terms of his artistic influences, I think these are really broad. Um, his studies in Cambodia, he would have been exposed to uh, pre-modern Cambodian uh, antiquity, things like the, um, you know, the sculptures and so on at Angkor Wat. Um, and then uh, both there and in his studies in France, he would have been exposed to, to modern art of the West. But we know that after he shifted to Africa, and particularly the Middle East, he had regular contact with artists from those parts of the world. Um, for example, I was very happy, excited to find in the artist's archive um, a drawing he made um, of an artist called Ismail Fatah, who's one of Iraq's most famous modern artists. So he was really kind of in a, a quite a cosmopolitan uh, network. And let's not forget that uh, everywhere he lived, including in Sudan, in the Ivory Coast and in Qatar, he held uh, exhibitions as well. So continuing to have uh, contact with his artist peers in, in those parts of the world. In terms of his subject matter, um, there's a really consistent kind of lifelong interest in aspects of the everyday. So we see that in these two works here. Um, on the right, uh, it's a painting he made soon after his arrival in Khartoum in Sudan. And it's a painting of um, the, the wet market um, that he and his family would do their shopping at, um, you know, just the grocery shopping for the week. And so you get a sense of the kind of chaotic energy um, of the marketplace. Um, and as with the work we were looking at earlier, everybody is just going about their business. Um, everyone's engaged in their tasks, whether that's caring for the animals, selling produce and so on. They're, they're not paying any attention to the artists. In the work on the left, um, again, it's a scene of um, ordinary daily life. In particular, this is the, the bakery that Yu Kin took his children to eat at um, when they lived in Doha, in Qatar. Um, the bakery was run by Pakistani migrants um, and it was just a local neighborhood bakery um, down the street from the family home. And again, you notice that the men are cooking the bread and, and serving it um, are engaged in a conversation with each other. Their gazes are exchanged um, in a kind of a circular motion within the picture um, and they're not paying any mind to Yukin um, or by extension to us um, as viewers. So this subject matter, I think, really reflects um, a, a few things. One, Yukin's uh, kind of consistent interest in outsider figures, um, migrants um, and you know, the kind of working classes in the places where he lived. 
Um, also, it reflects his um, sense of curiosity um, about unfamiliar people um, in these places um, and his respect for the distance between himself and them. The exhibition takes a comparative approach by pairing the two artists, Yu Kin and Chen Cheng Mei. So could you share what are the qualities you wanted to highlight by pairing these two artists? Mm, thanks, Ian. They're very different artists with uh, a very different uh, style and they led very different lives. And yet for me, what really brings them together um, is that both artists were utterly captivated um, by their travels around the world. Being an artist was to be a citizen of the world. They both had a kind of what I would call a planetary consciousness and their works um, draw links between Southeast Asia and other regions around the world, particularly in the global south. So for Chen Cheng Mei, while she lived and worked her whole life in Singapore, she took more than 200 trips abroad um, in the 1960s, travelling mostly within the region. Um, but from the 1970s onwards, which is the main focus of this show, travelling in South Asia, in Africa, in Latin America and beyond. So this painting here, which is the largest work in the exhibition, uh, draws its inspiration from one of the artist's experiences travelling in Brazil. Um, on a trip um, through Latin America. Um, you, the subject matter of the work, um, it's a so-called medicine man um, in the Amazon area. Um, so it sort of dramatizes the artist's thrill of this encounter with uh, an unfamiliar figure in an unfamiliar place. It's one of the few works in the exhibition where the figures actually look directly at us, look directly at the artists. And yet, even so, I think even in this work, Chen Cheng Mei manages to preserve the, the mystery or unknowability of these people. She doesn't pretend to offer us special insights into their inner lives or, or, or what they were, were thinking or feeling. And I think that's something that really links her works from this period with the works of Yu Kin, which we were seeing earlier. Both artists preserve this kind of respectful distance between the artist and the people that they are portraying. So the tailors and the mannequins is the first presentation at the National Gallery's um, new project space called Dalam Southeast Asia. It's a room that's located within the UOB Southeast Asian Galleries. So I'd just like to ask, how does this project space function in relation to the other rooms? Our new project space, Dalam Southeast Asia, um, really offers an opportunity for a kind of in-depth, um, deep dive into the practices of, of artists um, who are, have been lesser known or lesser explored. Um, the name Dalam, Southeast Asia, um, Dalam of course is the Malay word meaning inside um, and it invites us to kind of you know go behind the scenes or, or take a deeper look. Um, so it's really about providing access um, to aspects of the collection that have been uh, perhaps never shown before. Exhibitions in Dalam Southeast Asia will typically run for about six months, so they'll be changing twice each year. Um, and with this, um, one of our aims is that it'll bring people back to the gallery, um, and in particular back to the UOB Southeast Asia Gallery. Um, while even though this is a long-term exhibition, actually every year we change dozens and up to a hundred works um, on display in the UOB Southeast Asia Gallery. So there's always something new to see. So we, we, with Dalam Southeast Asia, we really hope to encourage our visitors to return again and again, perhaps to visit your favourite artwork that's on display or perhaps to see what's new.